How's it going, guys? It is 1.55 a.m., 3rd of February. Here in Japan, we have a medium difficulty question for both step one and step two. Step one, hypertension, cardiovascular. Step two, internal medicine. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. I'm HLMAN underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 62-year-old man. He has a 20-year history of hypertension managed with a thiazide. Three months ago, blood pressure 140 over 90. Today, it's 210 over 100. Fundoscopy shows AV nicking. Left carotid brewery is hurt. Question wants to know which of the following is most likely cause these findings. Should just mention real quick that AV nicking on fundoscopy is just a buzzy finding for hypertensive retinopathy. Okay, just memorize it. So let's just whip the answer choices. Choice A, Kahn syndrome, which is an adrenal adenoma of the adrenal cortex secreting aldosterone, wrong fucking answer, okay? So you say in theory, couldn't aldosterone be high where we have uh, increased fluid retention in the cortical collecting duct of the kidney as a possibility for this? I mean, absolutely, it's a possibility, but it's the wrong fucking answer and I'll explain as we move through the question. Choice B, adrenal cortical hyperplasia, wrong answer. So similarly to Kahn syndrome, it's not that this is impossible. Okay, some of you watching this clip, you say, I don't get it. Well, why couldn't this be correct? Adrenal cortical hyperplasia, obviously, uh, three layers, sclerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, secreting aldosterone, cortisol, and DHAS, interstene dion, respectively. And by all means, it is a cause. There is a, there is a role for this. Uh, patients who have autoimmune disease, if we were to give you high blood pressure and the patient also has Hashimoto or high blood pressure, the patient also has pernicious anemia, we could think about things such as uh, adrenalitis, okay, over Kahn syndrome, if we want to get really nitpicky. It's possible. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, renanoma. Wrong answer. Garbage diagnosis. I don't think I've ever seen this asked. Okay, maybe once, literally. Okay, it's like a school of medicine type of diagnosis that uh, first year med students might be aware of. Uh, but for US simile, absolute garbage. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, pheochromocytoma, wrong answer. It's adrenal medulla tumor. It's creating catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Classically, paroxysmal means comes and goes. Paroxysmal hypertension, tachycardia, palpitations. Okay, so what they love doing is telling you patient comes in has periodic pounding headaches, palpitations. They tell you blood pressure 120 over 80. Students like OMG can't be FEO because blood pressure is not high. But as I just fucking said, it's paroxysmal, it comes and goes. So patient with blood pressure 120 over 80, there might be might be just idiopathic, okay, that uh, precipitating event, or it can be a stressor, okay, or even an infection. And then it sets off the FEO, okay? So uh, then blood pressure surges. And you need to know that you treat this with an alpha blocker, phenoxybenzamine, irreversible alpha-1 blocker, because catecholamines, long fucking discussion, but if you inadvertently block beta receptors first by giving a beta blocker such as propranolol, you get what's called unopposed alpha, where all the catecholamines bind to the alpha-1 receptors, causing a surge in arteriolar vasoconstriction, blood pressure, you kill the patient. So beta blocker, wrong fucking answer. Theo, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, renal artery stenosis, correct answer. And then you say, well, why is this correct? Okay, I'll tell you. There's two main points probably in this question. The first is this carotid brewery here. So you say, well, how does that relate? Well, I'll ask you watching this clip. What causes a carotid brewery? You say, okay, carotid stenosis. I say, well, what could cause uh, carotid stenosis, like mechanistically, like what actually is causing it? It's atherosclerosis, okay? So isn't it safe to say that if we have atherosclerosis in one location, then we probably have atherosclerosis in other locations, such as the coronary arteries, the popliteal arteries, the renal arteries, okay? So that's the first point. It's not just isolated atherosclerosis in the carotid arteries. This detail means the patient has diffuse vascular disease with atherosclerosis. The second point is that we have a 20 year history of hypertension. So this is a chicken before the egg, egg before the chicken scenario, where if you look at my high yield risk factors PDF, which by all means I could link in the comments below, but if you look at that PDF, I talk about how uh, the biggest risk factors for atherosclerosis are diabetes, smoking, hypertension. So this patient's had a long history of hypertension that's 
risk factor for the ensuing atherosclerosis over the past couple of decades in the renal arteries, but it wasn't clinically significant. And then for whatever fucking reason, in the past three months, it became clinically significant where the autoregulation of the kidney could no longer keep blood pressure within the normal range. And now we have a three month history of accelerated hypertension. Okay. So that's, those are the two main points. One, knowing that this detail about the carotid brewery means atherosclerosis is diffuse, uh, including in the renal artery. And second, the recent history of accelerated hypertension uh, makes sense in the context of renal artery stenosis. That's how patients with renal artery stenosis often present. I should quickly point out before I end this clip that in younger patients who have quote unquote renal artery stenosis, it's not. We call it fibromuscular dysplasia. So if we were to give you a 32 year old woman uh, who has high blood pressure, let's say high renin uh, with high aldosterone, okay, and of course you'd, you'd expect low potassium, high sodium, uh, high pH, high bicarb, then that would be fibromuscular dysplasia, not renal artery stenosis. When we say renal artery stenosis, that refers to atherosclerosis. So fibromuscular dysplasia is not atherosclerosis. atherosclerosis. It's tuna media, media hyperplasia slash dysplasia, uh, but that's what we expect in young women, okay, 20s to 40s, not renal artery stenosis due to atherosclerosis. And you're going to do, after uh, checking renin and aldosterone levels, you're going to do MR, magnetic resonance, and geography for the diagnosis. You know the deal. To make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.